This jigsaw puzzle site is just so fun and so cool. I feel I felt that I had to share this with other teachers. So um, let me see if I can show you some tips and tricks. When you get to the site, it's not entirely obvious in which in which order you should progress. Um, this these are some things that I figured out. Um, first of all, I did uh, create an account and sign in for whatever reason. I I don't know that I found a huge benefit to that yet, but I I do that. Uh, anyways, uh, if you look at these first few puzzles, if you click on them and you go into them, what happens is you're, you are uh, opening up, uh-oh, uh, some kind of ad just appeared. Uh, how do I get rid of that? Oh, four, three, two, skip ad. Um, are you going to let me skip ad? No, you're not. Hold on. Okay, somehow I figured out how to skip the ad. Yay. Okay, so so anyways, um, so here's a puzzle. Oh, dang it, this one's already done. Let's see if we can find one that's not done. Anyways, the point that I was trying to make is that all of these are public puzzles. In other words, these are puzzles that people are already working on. We can see this one's 92% done, and this one is 32% done, I believe. We can also see this one has 336 pieces. This has 1,000. So I'm going to look at the one that's 92% uh, done, see if I'm interpreting that percent correctly. And does it look like it's mostly done? Uh, it sure does. And look at how small the pieces are. Now, um, for old folks like me, where the eye, the eyesight is beginning to uh, diminish, um, we can just zoom in. And you can either use the plus and minus up here, or if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you just scroll the mouse and you can zoom right in. Yay! And then you just start picking up pieces. And look at this. I can start participating as uh, maybe, I don't know, I guess maybe there is a benefit to being signed in. I don't know. I, I, it, I'm just logged in as one of these anonymous people over here so I can immediately start trying to place pieces myself um, so it's just, it's kind of a fun site okay so let me let me get back to business here so let's get let's get out of this for a second let's see if I can get to um, I'm gonna go back to the main page so anyways that is not the best place to set up puzzles for kids it you could it, it, you could use that and if you find neat ways to use that I'd love to hear from you but one of the things that I recommend is you go to catalog and under catalog you can go and you can find categories of pictures and one of the important things about choosing a good jigsaw puzzle is finding a puzzle that that actually looks pretty so uh, I found some really nice ones I liked under nature and art uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you here's a here's a beautiful fall leaves uh, puzzle and here's the thing that's really so cool about this check this out if you click on setup puzzle you can choose how many pieces you want. So if you want it to be a super advanced puzzle that'll take a long period of time, maybe even something for reinforcement activity or homework, um, you could you can make lots and lots of pieces. Or if you want it to be something that just uh, uses up a little bit of time at the end of the period or just breaks up the period, you could set it to be 35 pieces or 75, 70 pieces. Those two seem to be relatively straightforward, although 35 can almost go too quickly if you have a group working on it. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's do the 35 so the pieces are really big. I'm going to make it private, so I'm going to hit play. And one of the reasons I'm making it private is because I can go and click on invite. And under invite, I can go and copy, well, I guess I can just click this button here. I can copy this uh, link, and then I can paste that into the chat in Zoom or in Canvas, and my kids can just go nuts. I can go ahead and put kids in breakout rooms, and they can begin to solve this puzzle together. And it's so neat. All the And, and by the way, one thing I do ask that the students do, I want to see that they're all participating. So uh, I ask them to go up to this gear and click on it and there they can change the name from anonymous or anon to whatever their first name is or last name or first and last however you want them to to make to make it make it obvious to you who's doing which puzzle now uh, the thing that I like about this is uh, I the, there is a little bit of a problem if I want to take that very same link and I want to make it available to multiple breakout rooms, the problem is is then all of the breakout rooms will be working on the same puzzle. So in order to uh, in order to make it so different breakout rooms I just have like four or five people working. Uh, let me go back to jigsawpuzzles.io 
and I'll go in and I'll pick out uh, another. I wonder if under my puzzles if it'll show the ones. Okay, so this is one. Hmm. Yeah, I think these are ones that are active. I don't know if these are uh, ones that I can reuse. So I'm going to go back to catalog. And I'm going to go down to, uh, I'll show you another beautiful puzzle that I, I thought was pretty under art puzzles. And uh, normally I would set each breakout room with the same puzzle. And what I would do is I would just, uh, I'll, I'll just do a new link. So I'll just reset up the puzzle. So uh, again, I'll do 35 pieces and make it private. And then I'll go ahead and copy the link and I'll paste that into the next breakout room. And I'll keep, I'll do that over and over again with the same puzzle. And if I want to keep the kids going and if they're enjoying the experience and they're working well together, uh, then I will, uh, then I'll make the next puzzle more tricky. So uh, perhaps the next puzzle will be more pieces. And uh, and also you can, you know, choose a puzzle. If you are a puzzle master, you know, some puzzles are easier and some puzzles are more difficult. Um, so let's take another look at the art puzzles, see if there's anything here that's kind of interesting. I would think uh, maybe a puzzle like this one here might be a little trickier because there are so many colors that are similar. Um, whereas maybe a puzzle like this one over here might be easier for kids. Anyways, uh, so if I you can you can notch up the difficulty by the puzzle that you choose, and then also the number of pieces. So if you make it 154 pieces, that'll be a little bit more work, and it'll take the kids a little more time. Um, I have not tried 336 pieces yet, but for those of you who've spent long weekends working on puzzles, uh, even a thousand pieces is nothing to you. Anyways, we have all kinds of options and you can use different numbers of puzzle pieces on any puzzle you want. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let me see if I can remember what else I wanted to share. Oh, uh, before I forget in this video, I definitely wanted to talk a little bit about why do I feel that this is an appropriate activity uh, during class and, or outside of class. And to me, as a math teacher, uh, I believe, well, even as any kind of teacher, um, you know, there's two things that, that we, we want all students to take away from our classes. We want them to be critical thinkers and we want them to be good problem solvers. And that's true in every class that we teach. Um, um, I, I certainly take the problem solving more personally as a math teacher. But um, uh, when, when kids are working on these puzzles, they do have to use logic and reasoning. And uh, as far as math goes, they have to do visual pattern recognition, which is an important part of math. Um, and, and, but, but let me say something that I think unites all teachers in the desire to use a tool like this. And, uh, and that is team building. Uh, one of the things that I want when I put kids into breakout rooms is I want them to collaborate with each other. I want the, I want them to get to know each other. I want them to uh, I want them to realize that each of them has uh, unique contributions they can make to solving any problems that we're working on. And uh, and this activity is one way to get kids to work together as a team and learn to collaborate and maybe even get to know each other a little bit. So, anyways, I think it's a fantastic uh, website to use uh, during uh, Zoom breakout rooms uh, if you have a little bit of extra time in class. And uh, if you do want to keep track of what's going on in a particular puzzle, um, you can always see all of the students. I'll, I'll go to a public one so that you can see. Um, if we go out to a public one, you can see that there are stats that are being kept. Um, yeah, let's see. This one's just about done. You can see all the different players and how many pieces they placed and what their names are. And what I ask students to do is change their name so that I can recognize them. And then you could always capture this information if you wanted to hold kids accountable for actually participating. All right. I think that's all that I got. I just wanted to introduce you to the idea of uh, this Jigsaw Puzzle website, and I hope this video is helpful. And if you discover any tips or tricks, please let me know.